The views and opinions expressed by the participants on this show are not necessarily those of Stewart Information Services Corporation, Stewart Title, or Stewart Insurance. Before you make any investment, you should seek the advice of your investment advisor or attorney. Whether you're a real estate broker, realtor, homeowner, buyer, or seller, everything matters when it comes to real estate. This is Real Estate Matters with Store Title. Store Title's Bill Napick and guests open the door to what really matters in owning, buying, and selling real estate. And now, Real Estate Matters with Store Title, brought to you by Stuart Insurance. Here to inform, entertain, and inspire, Bill Napick. Welcome to the show. It is Real Estate Matters with Stuart Title, and I'm your host, Bill Nampick. Thank you for joining us. As always, simply go to stuart.com forward slash radio, where you can see the shows as we make a YouTube video of each show. You can see past shows right there at stuart.com forward slash radio. Once again, thanks for joining us. We're going to have some fun on this show. We have the star of the Netflix show called Marriage or Mortgage. She is the realtor, Nicole Holmes. She's on the show today. She's a Nashville realtor. So we're going to talk about real estate. Also, we're going to talk about the show Marriage or Mortgage. If you have not seen it, just go to Netflix and check out Marriage or Mortgage. It's a great show. In addition, we have money. We, we're going to talk about mortgages today, the rising interest rate, so much more as it relates to money and one of Houston's top magazines. We're going to talk about that as well. So thank you again for joining us on Real Estate Matters with Stuart Title, and let's get down to business. We have a very special guest right now. If you are a Netflix fan and a fan of the show Marriage or Mortgage, we have super realtor Nicole Holmes. She is the associate broker of Parks Realty in Nashville, Tennessee, and the star, one of the stars of Marriage or Mortgage on Netflix. Nicole, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you so much for having me, Bill. I'm glad to be here. Well, it is so awesome because, first of all, we love talking about real estate right here on Real Estate Matters, and everybody loves real estate, whether in whether they're in the process of buying or selling. We, people uh -huh. just love it, and of course, I would guess that's why the show Marriage or Mortgage on Netflix is such a hit. People just love real estate and what happens with people. Exactly. It's so true, and not to mention the other halves who don't think like we do, and they love to plan weddings and watch weddings. <laughs> <laughs> that part I don't understand, which is which well, I get emotionally engaged in the show because I'm saying, hey, I'm thinking mar uh, the mortgage buying a home is so important versus if you can't have both versus having just one big party for one day. But that's uh, you're preaching to the choir. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So for those, I want to say this right quick. If you haven't seen the show Marriage or Mortgage on Netflix, check it out. It is super fun, very entertaining, a lot of lessons. And Nicole, you're doing a great job. And it actually also makes me want to move to Nashville. Nashville is a great well, city. Well, thank you. Yeah, Nashville is a wonderful city. And, you know, that's probably the third co-star of the show. It's me and it's Sarah and it's Nashville. And I have so many people come up to me that either live here or they're thinking about moving here and they're here visiting. And they're like, it's just we love to see where you're going and what you're doing and recognizing the streets or, you know, the venues that Sarah is showing the couples as well. So it's getting a lot of play here in town as well. Well, it also looks like a fun city. Let's tell people, first of all, as far as real estate, before you were ever on the show, I'm guessing you were a real estate professional right there in Nashville. Correct. Yes, absolutely. I have worked in television and real estate, uh, probably TV longer than real estate, but um, my degree is in radio and TV from Southern Illinois University. And I came down to Nashville 20 some odd years ago <laughs> uh, for a job in television doing news and shopping networks and commercials. Um, and then about, gosh, a a dozen years ago now, I got my real estate license. And when this show, it literally fell in my lap. I thought, this is just so perfect. It, it's mixing my two favorite things in the world. So I, I was just happy as a clam doing the entire show. It was wonderful. Yeah, it's not like when we do what we love, it's, it's like not working, right? <laughs> exactly. Right. Well, when the show came out, and today, certainly we've been hearing real estate is breaking records in every city. Certainly the southern places like Texas, like Tennessee, yeah. people are flocking to these places. Tell us the difference in the market of when you started a few years ago till now. What's it like right, right now? 
Well, oh my gosh. You know, I'm not even sure if we were filming in this market, how many houses we would, would be able to find because the market is just bonkers. It's absolutely going bananas and it still is. And it's not showing any signs of slowing down. So as you alluded to, we shot this um, earlier, previous to all this, it started, we filmed in 19. So it was before the pandemic. It was before all of this real estate circusness started happening. And it is just, well, I had three people behind the scenes helping me find houses for these couples. And I mean, for each couple, we'd probably have to go through 10 to 12 houses a piece just because we've got to make sure that the houses are still available when it's, and it works with our shooting schedule. And then if that's happening and there wasn't a contract on it by that time, then we had to make sure that it was okay to film in the homes and ask the homeowners and not everybody was okay with that and thought that was great. So, yeah, I had a lot of help. I'm the I'm the swan you see gliding across the water, and there was a three other little legs real, working hard behind the scenes <laughs> underneath the water, helping me find those homes. And for all of the clients, it was it was a lot of fun, but it was a lot of work also. Well, being mindful of how the market is right now, as I have been rewatching the show, as I'm watching them, and then one of the people you're showing the home says, "Oh, well, I don't know about this." Or I don't. I'm like, just buy the home right now because <laughs> <laughs> if you knew what we know now, back when you were Absolutely. looking at it, right? <laughs> yes, and I just I'm not going to, but I stay in touch with the clients or with you know the couples, and you know now I'd love to pull all the comps on everything and say, had you purchased the house instead of spent the money on the wedding, this is how much you would have gained in equity already just in the last two years. I mean, I don't, but it's very tempting. <laughs> well, and I'm guessing that if you were to present those numbers, uh, in some of the cases, it might be a hundred thousand more, uh, may maybe absolutely. even, maybe that's conservative. I know. Yeah. It's crazy. And just for instance, right now it, I was talking with a colleague just the other day. They had put an offer in on a home in the 300s, which that's almost ridiculous. You can't even find that. So when there is a home in the $300,000 range in Nashville and it's livable, they get like 40 and 50 offers. And they said of those offers, you know, the winning offers are 30 and 35% above list. Yep. So it, it's just going I mean, I've never seen anything like this, certainly in my decade, you know, and then some of a career. But, you know, in the last 30 years of real estate, it, this is kind of unprecedented even. It may be, as I talk to realtors all the time, it may be it may have never been like this. I don't know. Yeah. But but having said that, one of the things about our areas, the southern area, now I always have enjoyed Tennessee because you have some of the things that I like about Texas but some of them are better. And one of those is that while you don't have a state income tax, mm -hmm. you have reasonable property taxes. And if you know anything about Houston, and I, maybe it's all over Texas, but certainly Houston, we're known for high property taxes. We're fortunate yeah. we don't have the state income tax. That's, that's a great thing. But you sure. have a more distinct four seasons, lower property right. taxes, and actually beautiful scenery versus Again, not to beat up on Houston, but we're super flat <laughs> here. It's a great yeah. economic spot, and I've loved living here. But that that Tennessee seems like, a, in, in Nashville in particular, looks like a really great place that meets a lot of things for people. It really is. It, it checks a lot of boxes for sure for people. And, you know, we've got the rolling hills. So as you mentioned, yeah, the scenery is just gorgeous. When I moved here over 20 years ago from Illinois, completely flat farmland, I saw these rolling hills and I thought I lived in the mountains. And I thought, oh my goodness, yeah. look at these mountains. <laughs> these are beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, that's true. So you went from the flat to the nice. Yeah. And yes. by, I, I do want to say, and correct me if I'm wrong, you were Miss Illinois uh, <laughs> a few years You've ago. You've been doing some digging. Yes. A, a very, a lot of few, a lot of few years ago. Yeah. I was Miss Illinois USA in 95. Wow. So. <laughs> well, as I said, when I left you the voicemail to be on the show, you light up the screen. Your co-star, Sarah Miller, by the way, and mm -hmm. I hope she listens to this segment i'm also a fan of sarah she does a tremendous job both of you she does. when we study whether it's real estate or when i as a student of sales when i look at real estate or i look at what she does in my mind my opinion no no mm -hmm. no offense sarah but i think 
you have the harder thing to sell, which is that one day that wedding is what she's trying right. to sell to the couple. But she is, yes. she is tremendous at getting her in in the art of persuasion. Just saying. She is. Yes. And it, it truly comes from the heart. I mean, she is a diehard, hopeless romantic. She's married to her high school sweetheart. She loves what she does. And it truly shows. So I, she did a great job. And I think that's one of the reasons why we work so well together. We certainly, neither one of us wanted to do a reality show where there's backstabbing, you know, and cattiness or anything like exactly. that. We're both each other's biggest fans and, and now extremely close friends. So it's really great that I had, we just had so much fun working together. It, like you said, it wasn't work. It was just too much fun. Well, it's refreshing. Your interaction with each other is it, it, when you have your counsel together, it's, it's like you're on the same team to try to help <laughs> these people, even though there's that playful, friendly spirit of comp competition. <laughs> right. Yes. We both are competitive humans. So that aside, we didn't let that get in the way of truly what was best as far as the couples thought it was best for themselves. There were a hand, you know, there were a couple of, uh, of, of the couples that I could see, I could understand where they were coming from and why they chose the wedding. But for the most part, I was just yeah. shaking my head. It, you know, my face doesn't lie very well. I would think that I covered it up pretty well when I would hear when they would choose wedding. And then I look back at the episodes and I'm like, yeah, no, that's, I don't have a good poker face. Everything that I'm feeling on the inside kind of comes right through my face. <laughs> well, let me say this. I don't know how many people, how people watch their TV or their Netflix and so forth, but most of the time I watch on my movie, th on my 120 inch screen. <laughs> oh, don't tell me that. <laughs> and, and, and two comments on that. You're exactly right. Cause you could see facial expressions. You could see yeah. nuances, but the other thing about your show, who's ever involved with the lighting, I was noticing this the other evening and that is the lighting and the colors, the production value of the show is so beautiful it is, wow. it is and, and colorful and of course the fashionable as you are the outfits that you both wear and the colors <laughs> of the of the office that you're in it's really nice and it's great to you're watch on so the big kind. screen yeah well so. thank you so much we, yes netflix had an amazing uh production team from 51 minds and yeah i will pass all of that on to the, uh, those kudos will go to the lighting and the set directors and all that good stuff they did a great job as could far, not have done it without them that's for sure as far as the buyers in Nashville right now, how many of, let's say, the last 10 sales that you were helping buyers, how many of them mm -hmm. were cash deals? Gosh, out of the last 10, probably Roughly. just two, okay. honestly. All right, so there's yeah. 20%. And yeah. And as far as helping sellers, it would, I would, it would seem to me that as a real estate professional, you would want to have as many listings as you can, right? Absolutely. And that's what I'm short in right now. I've got lots of buyers, but it's hard to find listings. Yeah. To represent the sellers. It's just, and everyone's going out and getting their real estate license. And so. I, you know, when I got mine a decade ago, I thought, gosh, everybody's got theirs. Now truly everybody's got theirs <laughs> because in this market, they just think it's super easy, but they'll get weeded out. The ones that aren't serious about it and don't know what they're doing and are just trying to think they're in it for a fast buck, they'll realize and they won't last long. <laughs> That's Well, here in Houston, I think, I don't know where our last number is, but I think we have 40,000 realtors. Certainly they're not all practicing, wow. but it sure. is, and it shows like your show that <laughs> makes it look easy. It shows yeah. like all the other real estate shows where, where the realtors driving around in luxury vehicles, selling mm -hmm. half a million million dollar homes and they're all smiling and yeah they make it look you all make it look easy yeah <laughs> but yeah. it's not there's no doubt about it's that it's not there's a lot of behind the scenes that goes on that we don't show on camera all the pesky back and forth um and staying on the phone till 10 o'clock and going back and forth with the, the other agents so but it's still fun i still even love doing that well the, the series marriage or mortgage how how long did it take to do the complete season just curious um we probably shot all of it about four months yep it took about four months and is there going to be another season we have our fingers crossed we haven't heard we've been out 
about a year. So we've been living on Netflix for about a year now. And um, I would think they would have picked us up by now if there was going to be one. But I'm a very optimistic person and I'm keeping it out there in the universe and I'm open to it. So Sarah and I would absolutely love to to reunite and do some more seasons. So I'm just not sure how easy it would be in this market, but we could figure something out, I'm sure. As far as people that are coming when you're helping the buyers and your and the other agents in your in your company is called Parks Realty, right? We'll tell people right Correct. now they can reach out. Yeah. Parks Realty, you're Nicole Holmes, star mm-hmm. of marriage or mortgage and associate broker at Parks Realty. As far as people that are coming from outside of Tennessee, let's take again the ten, example of 10, 10 pe- buyers. How many of them are coming from outside of Tennessee? Oh gosh. All of them? Almost exclusively. Yep. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So you're not and really if, serving people moving around within the city, it doesn't sound like right. as much. Nope. Because if you sell high right now, you got to buy high. And so it's a lot of people coming in. We joke that there's an invisible bridge from California oh, to <laughs> Nashville and from New York to Nashville. I mean, I have so many California clients. It's crazy. And so, the same thing here in Houston. If, if yeah. we've said on this show about and not just me, but when I ask realtors, like I'm asking you, that's what they're saying. California comes up more often than not, New York, and every once in a while, because of the oil business here that we'll probably have for a while, who knows, but we're having people coming from out of the country as well. So, but yeah, yeah, people are coming for places that are just better for business and better for weather and all these things. It sounds like. You got it. So, Let's tell people what's next for Nicole Holmes right there (laughs) as a real estate professional or anything else. I I bet you have some other projects lined up and things in the works, but what can you tell us about? I do have some coals in the fire that I'm not allowed to talk about, but um, just, you know, be prepared to probably see me on some more TV things in the future and still selling real estate. I'm not getting out of this business anytime soon. It's it's almost in my blood. I come from a, a construction background, a family-owned construction company, and my parents got into land development and commercial construction. They had apartments while I was growing up, so I've been showing property since I was, you know, knee-high to a grasshopper, as they say. <laughs> and before we close the segment, Nicole, what else do you want people to know? Oh, uh, that you know what it's. Now is the time, even though the market seems like it's crazy, houses are not getting any cheaper. So jump into the market. If you're thinking about it, rent is going up also. So you might as well pay for your mortgage and not somebody else's because, you know, if you're paying rent, you're you're paying a mortgage. It's just not your own. Yeah. In fact, if you're paying rent, the interest rate's 100 (laughs) percent. There you go. There you go. Nicole, let's tell people how they can reach out to you. Should they want to move from wherever to Nashville, Tennessee? You can help them. Yeah, absolutely. They can find me on the social media platforms. I'm on Instagram. It's Nicole Holmes Realty is my handle. So I get a lot of uh, a lot of business that way real easy you can also google nicole holmes right there on the big google it's there nicole thank you so much for being on the show oh it's my pleasure thank you so much for having me thoroughly enjoyed it it's always fun to talk about money and important too we have james beaver with envoy mortgage james welcome to the show thanks a bunch bill thanks for having me (laughs) money makes the world go around kind of sort of it does yep (laughs) well let's tell people envoy mortgage Let's tell them about your company. Yeah, yeah. So Envoy Mortgage is a uh, Houston-based uh, mortgage company, and uh, we've been around. We just celebrated our 25th year. Originally started out as First Houston Mortgage, and then as the company grew into other parts of the country, you know, the name didn't work anymore. So we changed to Envoy. I think it was back in 07, 08, something like that. And uh, we've got, I think, 115 locations across the country. We just opened up a new spot in Hawaii, so we're spreading out and. Having fun doing it. That sounds awesome. I'd like to visit that branch in Hawaii, by the way, yeah, someday. No kidding. no kidding. Your role at the company. Let's tell people about that. Absolutely. So we have three locations in Houston, and I'm the branch manager that oversees those uh, those offices with loan officers and uh, uh, various other folks that are involved in the mix. As far as the, the underwriting process, give mm-hmm. us an idea if there's distinctions or what the process is as far as underwriting and, and how that's efficient for your customers. 
Yeah, great. So the underwriting of of a mortgage is really, I mean, that's kind of the big hurdle that everyone wants to get past, right? That's where we get that stamp of approval, and it's it's ready to get get the get the closing going. And uh, so I always tell people, once we get past underwriting, that's when that's when everybody's high fiving and excited. All the tough work's done. Uh, What we try to do, we've been doing this for about three and a half or four years now, is that uh, we're getting our clients underwritten. Uh, approved from a credit standpoint, uh, oftentimes before they go shopping for a home, before they go under contract. So we already know what kinds of things we're going to need to address to make sure that the borrower is is good to go and uh, and ready to buy the home. And that gives our clients a huge advantage, I feel like, when it comes to competitive situations where you've got multiple people trying to buy the same house. And we get to tell the uh, the listing agent, the seller's realtors, that these folks have already been through underwriting, and it takes some takes some of the pressure off, uh, both for the buyers and the sellers, knowing that that's been completed. So, we think it's a great way to serve our clients. Uh, we put in a little extra time up front, but it, it it really works out great. Would it be safe to say that underwriting is kind of like the application process, or not? So, the application process is handled by the loan officers, the origination group. And then the the underwriting is like the quality control, right? They're going to really get into the details. the details, into the details, and make sure verification. Yep, absolutely. They want to make sure that everything in that loan file adheres to guidelines and regulations, so that we have a loan that is 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 high quality. That's one of the things. There's so many components, and and I'm sure so many laws and regulations that apply to what you're doing, helping people get the loan. You bet. And all, and even safety, all those things. So it's a very complicated process. And I would think for some individuals, a, a, an individual or even a family, if they haven't bought a home in five, ten, seven, three years, it's changed quite a bit since then. Oh yeah. A little. Since yes. last month, maybe. <laughs> yes, yes. I've been doing this a little over 20 years now, wow. and uh, we've definitely seen some changes in that time. A lot of it really kicked off as a result of the, the financial crisis a little over a decade ago. And so, uh, the government's really stepped in and created quite a few new rules and guidelines, uh, regulations over the years. And so, yeah, it, it's it's our job to help guide folks through that process. And it is definitely an eye-opener for folks who haven't either haven't ever done it or haven't done it in a long time. And also, your company and your individuals and associates have to be on top of the changes, and they come down the pike every now and then, I guess. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It, it never changes. And so, I think it's uh, uh, a great advantage that we have a lot of resources with our company that we can go to to uh, get guidance on something new that's happened that we you know, aren't always on top of. And so, we've got great teammates internally within our, uh, our corporate office. And a lot of the resources our company gives us access to really help with that. Also sounds like your clients have direct access to key decision makers within the company. Yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, as big of a company as we are, it's a company that also, I think, really prides itself culturally on uh, being able to get to anyone in the organization that can make decisions. And so, one of the great, you know, advantages we have locally is that since we're a Houston-based company, my offices are really geographically tied very much to the to the headquarters where all the executives and all of the the uh, internal operations folks are based and so we have a, a, a easy access to anybody that we need to get to to figure out those tough situations and really navigate through it efficiently so it's yes. nice first of all each real estate transaction involving the home mortgage all the components of, of just the real estate transaction each one's a little bit different yep. say from the title company's point of view all these things come together but each individual or family when you look at the finances everybody has a different amount saved everybody yep. earns a different amount yep. some people are self-employed thus all the things where your company has so much to do and it's very important work yeah, absolutely. It, you know, it's one of the things. There's a lot of talk, of course, about you know what role will artificial intelligence play in our industry. Uh, technology is driving so many changes, um, and one of the things that I think as we get further and further into using tools um, like that, it also becomes more and more clear how much the individual really matters. And until human beings are not the ones buying homes. Uh, we're going to have a situation where there Wait needs to, there, 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 yeah no the, 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 that's the thing right is that every family every one of our clients comes to us with a unique set of circumstances and that's one of the things I love about the work that we do is getting to 
really get into the mix with folks and make a difference in their lives and uh, and help them navigate what can be sometimes a daunting uh, process. That's right. Each yeah. person's situation and background is different. Some have stellar credit credit ratings and just clear sailing all the way. Yep. Everything is exemplary. Yep. And then others, there's been a challenge one year that something happened. Right. And we have to get over that hurdle and doing so with a company and as far as the overall experience that you provide that's so important with each individual and family that you're serving yeah absolutely yep interest rates boy we're hearing a lot about that lately yes we are <laughs> so what, what, what can you tell those that are out there and they want to buy a home and they may have waited or it just wasn't their time maybe mm -hmm. they're just moving to houston or maybe they're just moving around yeah. the corner upsizing downsizing all those things what can you give people a word of, of hope as far as interest rates how does that affect someone that says well, look i want to buy a home here it is april but july i'm going to be buying a home when should i start the process and then what would you tell them about the interest rates how afraid of that should they be well that's a great question uh first of all i always tell people you know you should buy a home when you're ready to buy a home you should you should not try to chase like the perfect timing either from an interest rate standpoint or from a housing market standpoint if you're ready to buy a home buy a home and uh, we'll help you come up with the right strategy because sometimes a home is your forever home and sometimes it's a home you're going to own for you know just a handful of years and so a lot of times um, we'll find that people enter to enter into the conversation expecting that their strategy should look like this but then after we lay things out for them it changes a little bit because we want to look at things like how long they're going to own the house and, and and things of that nature as far as what's what's going on with interest rates yeah, they've definitely they've jumped up, and I I don't know that I've ever seen them jump up this quickly. And you know, since the beginning of the year, we've seen a pretty a pretty good spike up there. But you know, historically, we're still looking at very good interest rates, and I think that uh, what we're seeing from the housing market is indicative of the fact that uh, real estate values continue to go up. And so, if you're ready to buy a home, uh, I would suggest you you get in there and find 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 one and go for it. And then, hey, if an opportunity comes up later on to refinance or change your terms around in a way that, that works better for you or your family, then that's something that we can help out with as well. If someone's thinking about buying, I'm talking to them in April, and they're talking about buying in the summertime, I would absolutely encourage them to go through the pre-approval process. Like when? Now? Yeah, right away. I mean, that's it's it's valid for four months, and if you need to go beyond four months, we just do it again, which doesn't take too long because we already have all their information. Um, and that gives them the ability to get their ducks in a row and, and really uh, begin to plan for that purchase and sometimes we find that when people begin that process you know the right house pops up for them and if they're ready to go they're able to make a move on it so be prepared be prepared absolutely that is the motto of the united states coast guard they say semper paratus always ready i think that's a good word when you were looking for it. a mortgage yeah right? absolutely yeah absolutely <laughs> well and that's a great point too if so, I, I i would not be daunted by saying oh well the interest rate's higher than it was three months ago or it might get worse Hey, if you have to refinance, that's always an, a possibility. Yep. So get the lowest rate possible. And what about adjusted rates? Uh, adjust that, for, adjustable uh, rate yeah, mortgages. Yeah. Is yeah. that going to be a factor now, or you know, uh, I think we're going to see more and more of that. I was actually just talking to one of our product development guys this morning about that. Uh, we do have some adjustable rate mortgages, and they are beginning to become more appealing to folks where we haven't used them in a long time. Kind of forgot about them. There yeah, for a while. that's right. Yeah, back early earlier in my career, it was just about all we did. It seemed I like. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> so those will those will probably be picking up steam. It doesn't seem like there's a ton of investors who are rolling out very many of those products right now, but I think that that will be coming back to the market here uh, in the near future, probably. We're talking with James Beaver with Envoy Mortgage. He's the branch manager there. James, before we close the segment, what else do you want people to know? Call James Beaver. <laughs> okay. Hey, give us a call. We'd love to help out. We work with uh, all kinds of folks from all over the city uh, of Houston and uh, really all over the state. But uh, we we definitely we try we really pride ourselves on on the customer service. We want to take the time and have a real consultative approach. Help people find the right solution. Uh, for their needs and their goals, and we love doing it. Love helping no out. No about it. We hear about the Envoy Mortgage Experience all the time. It's an experience. It's so important. James, how can people reach you and your company? You guys can go to my site, which is www.beaverhomeloans.com. That just takes you to my Envoy landing page, um, or you can go to envoymortgage.com. Phone number? 713-328-1138. 
beaverhomeloans.com. You could be driving and remember that, huh, James? <laughs> I hope so. There you go. That's Check the them idea. out. And again, the number is 713 328 1138. Thanks so much, Bill. Thanks for being on the show. All right. Have a good one. Let's welcome Peter Remington. He is with Houston City Book Magazine. Peter, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited about being here. Well, one of the great things about Houston, maybe other cities too, is we have some tremendous magazines that people, as they're dining, as they're at a hotel, things like that, we have great magazines, and one of them is Houston City Book. First of all, let's tell people about the magazine. Well, let's talk about that because City Book is basically a new magazine to the used to market. You know, this is the fourth, soon to be the third largest market in the United States. You sound like me. I say that all the time. I, soon to be the third. Soon, I know. I, think, I can't believe we didn't make it, right? <laughs> We're getting there. I think so. But um, here we are in the city, but we don't have a magazine that's dedicated to Houston. All the other magazines have either multiple cities or they're regional magazines. City Book came out five years ago, launched by Jeff Grimion. And uh, it is the only magazine that is dedicated to Houston, written by Houstonians for Houstonians. So that's the cool thing about the magazine. And in a very populated area of magazines, and the fact that everybody's saying the magazines are, or print is dying off, it's not. City Book has been a going concern now for five plus years, and we look forward to doing it for the rest of our lives. In fact, we do want to tell people, yes, it's available digitally, yes, right? Yes, you can get it online. And no let's tell the website on that. That's very simple. It's HoustonCityBook.com. Can't mess that one up. HoustonCityBook.com. <laughs> but right. I want to say, I like actually, especially, especially with activities like at a restaurant, maybe a breakfast, a hotel, just picking up something, a hard copy with pictures and beautiful pages. I like looking at it and paging through it. And Feeling I think some people paper, still do. A lot of people do, as a matter of fact, magazines are not dying, and print is not dying. It's actually as strong as ever before because, frankly, what's going on is I say to Jeff, who when he, we produce a magazine like that, I say, that's a two-glass-of-wine magazine. I mean, you sit down with a glass of wine and start thumbing through those pages, reading the articles and reading the content of things that are happening in, in Houston, what's going on in fashion, what's going on with the latest restaurants and so forth. You have a great time sitting down and reading that magazine. In fact, it's almost analogous to when we were children in my generation is reading the cereal box as you're having your breakfast. Now that we're grown adults, have a glass of wine and, and read Houston City Book is awesome. Well, I had wine in my cereal. I don't know about you. but <laughs> Well, I did not. But... <laughs> so, anyway, but... um. It's so, it's so much that. And you sit down and enjoy the magazine, whether it like be poolside, sitting on the couch, relaxing. The one thing about the magazine, especially City Book, when you're reading that magazine, there's nothing else you can do. You can't be painting. You can't be working out. You can't be doing. You could just sit down, relax, and escape in between those pages with all the great articles he has. And that's right. As far and the real estate community really loves your magazine, Houston City Book. They love it. They participate in it. In fact, one of the issues right now, you have a realtor section going on as far as a music thing, and I think that's an event, too, well, you might want to mention. Yeah, today we're highlighting, in this current issue, we're highlighting Houston musicians. So we have six music musicians in the magazine that are Houston-based, Houston-grown, and just producing their music right here in Houston. And I'm going to brag about Houston one more time. I mean, Houston is the only city that I'm aware of that you can launch a career here and keep your career here and have a fabulous career. You don't have to leave the city to go out to another place to establish yourself or make your foothold. You can do it all right here in Houston, and that's what these music musicians are doing. The other thing is we are going to have a launch party for uh, the uh, music issue. Uh, it's going to be April 28th. I'm going to keep it kind of quiet where it's going to be because we have a limited amount of people we're inviting. So but there will be a launch party some people will be invited, and you'll we have announce guest, it. Yeah, we have a guest list of about 300, and uh, there'll be about 200 that we will be able to accommodate. Sounds like it could be a fun event. It always is. It always is, yeah. This well, what's interesting, too, events are so important. I met you at an event at the Federal American Grill where yes. you assembled speakers, and I hope some of those things are com coming up as well because it, those are super events. I would say almost, and there you'll find realtors, all sorts of people, but there are so many great events in Houston, and apparently you're behind several of them. We, City Book is behind several of them, and uh, we pride ourselves on that. The event that happened at the Federal Grill was uh, we did a, a special section called Thrive and Inspire, and we had 12 people that talked about what they were doing to keep their companies 
uh, motivated, keep their employees motivated, how they treat their employees and how to, to uh, increase their volume of business throughout the pandemic. And after we produced that book, I thought to myself, this would be a great thing for people to hear these wonderful entrepreneurs speak. So that was the genesis of the whole thing over at the Federal Grill. So we had that. That was on March 3rd, I believe. And it was an early morning event from 8.30 to 10.30. And we had eight great speakers. And it was fantastic, very motivational. Well, I hope we get another one of those and how time flies, March 3rd. I know. <laughs> Where are we now? <laughs> it is zooming by in a crazy way. So let's tell people. Also, you mentioned the editor is Jeff. Yes, Jeff let's, Grimion. Let's tell a little bit about Jeff. I know he has a great uh, bio. He has a great history here in Houston. As a matter of fact, he came here in 2005 and actually launched Modern Luxury's Houston's book, Modern Luxury. Uh, he was the launching editor and stayed there for about 10 years. And then... I was the editor, excuse me, I was the publisher of that magazine for six and a half of those years. And while we were working together, he showed me a concept of what he wants to do with his life, which was to produce his own magazine. And I love watching people manifest their dreams and their ambitions. So I said, Jeff, it sounds like a great idea. Good luck with it. I didn't see it as being a competition in the sense that Modern Luxury is a regional magazine and he wants to go local with it and so forth. So he launched the book. And... Uh, so he has a great background. He graduated from Columbia University in New York with a uh, degree in journalism and has done great things all, all around here in the city, beating all the right people. So he has, has the great connections here in Houston. That's what kind of makes him the best editor-in-chief here in town. We're talking with Peter Remington, and we're talking about Houston City Book Magazine. As people may have heard of the magazine, they may already have a copy, yet regular copies. Let's say someone does not have a copy of the magazine. Where can they get it other than the digital issues that people can go on? Again, the website for the digital issue is? HoustonCityBook.com, and it'll be up in the left-hand corner where it says past issues or current issue. And you click there, and you'll come up with the digital issue. We produce 40,000 pieces every issue. With those 40,000 pieces, uh, we mail out 10,000 to Tanglewood, just people that have you know, signed up to get the magazine delivered to them. So all the great zip codes and so forth. And then we have, we're in places like uh, hotels such as uh, Four Seasons, the Omni Hotels, uh, the Zaza Hotels. So we're in quite a few of those hotels. And then also you'll find us in high-end restaurants and shops with a specifically people that advertise in our magazine. We drop books off there for distribution. And whenever we have an event, we bring the book, and whether it be at Valet or whatever, we had to put have it put in your car, and that's another way to get the book as well. We have about 710 different distribution locations throughout the city. Well, it's a beautiful mag. The hard copy, certainly online, is tremendous. But the hard copy, you spare no expense in having a quality publication. Thank you. One, once again, where we can hold it, look at it, and enjoy it, no matter what we're doing. Yeah. I think it's awesome. What are some of the things as far as the in the real estate world? I know realtors talk with you all the time. Sometimes you feature them or they advertise with you. But give us a word on the real estate community from the magazine's perspective. And then what else is coming down the pike with the magazine? Certainly. Well, our next magazine, let me talk about the real estate first. You know, realtors right now use a lot of online advertising. And during that time, you know, when you go online to look at a, a, a piece of property or whatever, you see it, you click on it, you move away from it, and then you, you lose it. The good thing about being in City Book Magazine as a realtor, you have a photo of your property, you have a photo of yourself, you can talk about what you do, you can talk about what your key points about being a realtor are, and it's right there in the magazine. When the people are done with the magazine, it doesn't go away. It's on their coffee table. That's why it's a great-looking coffee table piece. So people can refer back to it at any given moment. They could save it, do whatever. You really can't save online. So that's why it's so valuable to realtors. In fact, it's also kind of like being on radio shows, too, as a real estate professional. It's another distinction because we think you mentioned the number 40,000 as far as the print copy. I think that's the number that gets pushed around here in Houston in terms of the amount of real estate people that have real estate licenses. I think is it it's, 40, uh, it's somewhere that, around that there. Right? Now, certainly not all are active realtors and things like that. Right. And there's a certain percentage that are the active ones and then the ones that truly go above and beyond. But, yeah, I think that's about the number as far as people holding the license, give or take. Well, let's think about that. If there's 40,000 of them, then let's do the uh, 2% rule, right? Or maybe let's do the Pareti rule where 20% of those realtors make 80% of the sales. So 
if you think of that, then there's 8,000 people actually making a living out of selling real estate, and the other people are just filling in some blanks, I think. You might be right. I've never been that good at math. But in the meantime, Peter, we're talking with Peter Remington. Before we close the segment, Peter, what else do you want people to know about the magazine or anything else? Well, I told you a lot about the magazine already. The one thing I want to leave you with is that, like I said, we have 40,000 pieces that we produce. However, we have 120,000 readers. So it really gets out there and reaches a lot of people. It is something that people can sit down and read and enjoy and enjoy a glass of wine, enjoy dinner or do whatever. It's a really neat publication to be with. And it's current. and It's all about Houston for Houstonians. Houston City Book Magazine. Again, the website is... HoustonCityBook.com. Can't mess that up. Thank you so much, Peter Remington. And we'll say hello to Jeff right here from the radio. Hey there, Jeff. How are you? <laughs> Maybe tune next in, time. Tune in Sunday at 5. <laughs> we'll see him next time. Thank you, Peter. Bye. In today's litigious society, it is imperative to have the proper insurance to offset the many risks facing your business, especially if you're a real estate broker. Your errors and omissions and cyber liability insurance can help limit the threat of these risks if you know what to look for. Not sure if your insurance addresses the risks facing your business. Contact Stewart Insurance to be confident your brokerage can withstand these risks. Stewart Insurance, 866-798-2827. StewartInsurance.com. That's StewartInsurance.com or call 866-798-2827. Real Estate Matters with Stewart Title would not be possible without our partner, Stewart Insurance. With a focus in real estate and a special focus on real estate brokers, Stewart Insurance creates insurance plans to address the risks facing our industry today. They invest a significant amount of time helping real estate broker owners offset and manage their risks. Here he is again, John Bramlett with Stewart Insurance. John, welcome again. Bill, always a pleasure to be with you. Every show is so interesting. I like each and every one as we go go forth because you never know who their guests are going to be and what they're going to say. It's awesome. It really is, and I was excited to, to meet Peter and, and have the folks from City Book on because I'm like you. I like to to hold in my hand what I'm reading beyond being in on a screen. I like to turn pages. I like ink on my fingers. I may just exactly background or age <laughs> or a combination, but I I always I I much rather would get the magazine at the bookstore or get it in the mail than than to read it online. I agree whole, wholeheartedly. And that also comes to, into play as far as writing things down in a journal or anywhere else versus just typing things on a computer. I, li I could do that on the computer, but I do like to holding my journal up now to the YouTube camera. And there's John's. I like writing with a fountain pen in my journal. That's super fun. So and insurance is also fun. John, what should we tell people today? So last week, um, a member of our personal lines team that works with our families and individuals on their insurance needs was really fortunate, and, and he was on as a panelist on a multi-generational -gener uh, wealth discussion uh, that was held during Realist Week uh, by the Houston Black Real Estate Association. And uh, Raheem uh, was discussing the key considerations around your personal insurance and how that can have an effect on your your long-term wealth as a family as well as an individual. And one of the key components of that, obviously, is the home plan. And, and, and many times that's kind of the, the, the central aspect of an individual's uh, uh, personal insurance that they be kind of begin with their home and work out from that. Um, so I was just thinking about some of the things that Raheem had shared on the panel and thought it might be nice to, to share some of those with our listeners today. Sounds like a stellar idea. What were they? Well, the first thing to think a look at is let's even get broader than that and um, understanding the difference between an independent agent and a captive agent. That an independent agent um, works with a variety of insurance partners so that we have the ability to match the right partner with the right family or the right individual based upon their needs at this point in their life versus a captive agent uh, can only work with uh, the plans or the policies that the company they're associated with offers in that market. Not all captive agents offer the same things in every market. So there's a, a greater variety and a greater ability to customize with an independent agent. The second, before we get into some specifics, is dealing with an agent versus an advisor. An agent's going to sell you a policy, and an advisor's going to build you a plan. And if you're willing to invest a few moments with an advisor, you can truly have a properly insured plan uh, that makes that 
that you understand what you're covered and what's not covered, that you're comfortable with what you're taking on as a responsibility as a family or an individual and what you're placing on the insurance uh, company. So uh, if you can work with an advisor that truly builds a plan around what's important for you at this point in your life, the better off you're going to be. Well, insurance is so important, and it has so many categories. That advisor idea and, and help would be very important. Absolutely. And and so as we talk about specifically about a home plan, there are a couple of things that to keep in mind. One, you would qualify for a home plan um, if, it's, if the home is owner-occupied and it's your primary residence. So that's going to be the first two things that you'll need to confirm is that it's owner-occupied. It's where you live, and it's your primary residence. Then there are a few things that you ought to take a look at um, as you're evaluating a plan, whether it's a new plan, if you're a brand-new homeowner, or if it's, if it's your existing plan and you're thinking about it's getting close to renewal time where you just want to make sure that, that you are properly covered. The first thing is um, what's the perils coverage or the perils language within the plan? And all a perils is is the cause of damage. So when an insurance company looks at an evaluation of a damage, they're going to look for the peril. What was the cause? And there are two kinds of perils that you'll see or in a plan. One is all perils, where everything is covered except those perils that are listed. So every type of uh, potential cause of damage is covered except for the one specifically listed in the plan. And then there's named perils, where the only thing that's covered are those that are named in the plan. So if you have an option um, and you want to have the broadest and deepest coverage possible, you'll want to look for a plan that's all perils versus name perils. Um, the second area to take a look at is the difference between replacement cost versus average of value, or excuse me, actual cash value. So replacement cost versus actual cash value. And the language is really important here in, in, in any legal document, but especially here in an insurance plan that for a replacement costs, it's the cost to replace damaged property with materials like kind and quality uh, without any deductible, or excuse me, out any uh, deduction for depreciation. So they're going to replace it in like kind, like quality, without any depreciation. Actual cash value is going to repair or replace the property, but it's going to include depreciation. So if it's a couch and it's five years old, they're going to take whatever that depreciation would be on the couch for that five years and take that out of the value of, of, the, of the couch before they replace it. So just keep that in mind. Again, if you can get replacement cost coverage uh, versus actual cash value, you're better off. Um, the others to, to, to take a look at is, do you have water damage coverage in your plan? Um, and it's important to understand that water damage coverage is, generally speaking, damages caused by water that happen within the home, very broad definition, versus something that's caused by rising water, which would be generally considered a flood, and that would be a flood plan, which is a separate policy. So there are four that may be covered in your uh, insurance plan. So the first is to find out if the four are covered, and if so, to what level. Um, so the first is sudden and accidental. So you've got a burst pipe, or you've got an appliance that breaks, and you've got I water. Not, no, yeah, no, that's <laughs> none of those are good. None of those are Especially good. Especially the burst pipe. Yeah, seepage and leakage. So you've got plumbing or piping or faucets that leak over time that can cause damage. You've got water backup. So in sinks or bathtubs or toilets, you've got a backup and an overflow. And then the last one is foundation water damage. So uh, it's repair is required because you had to break the foundation in order to get to the damage. So if you had a pipe underneath your house, you had to break the foundation to get in to make the repairs. The, uh, founda or the foundation water damage can help in the cost of repairing the foundation, not the pipes underneath it, but the foundation itself. In those four types of water damage, it's important to understand what are your limits. Do you have the full limit of the policy, or are there sublimits? Is it less than normal? So not all policies have those four uh, water damages, and not all policies have them at full limits. So it's important to understand what's covered and what's not. Well, once again, it's 
been a while since I've used this phrase, but it, it, it's hitting me right now. Again, insurance has a language of its own, the language of, an, you know, we're multilingual. Why, how about the language of insurance? That's why this, I believe this segment is so important because while it's not exhaustive, you do remind people that insurance, like many things, has its own language. That's why it's important to talk to a professional, an associate, someone at Stewart Insurance or even another company, but it's, we need guidance through this. I know I do in terms of choosing insurance and knowing what to have and, and what it's at, what I'm actually buying. Well, and we hope that our listeners are choosing Stewart Insurance, but the, the key goes back to the difference between a, an agent and an advisor, that an advisor is going to take the time so you do understand what that is. And they're not, they're not just rattling off uh, actual cash value or replacement costs, but make sure that you understand what that means and how that coverage is, you know, that they understand you understand what a deductible is. And, and the fact that you've got to pay that prior to coverage coming on board. Understand what the premium is, and that's what you're going to pay for the insurance. Understanding what happens if you adjust your deductible. Understand what happens if you adjust your premium limits. Don't just water off sudden and accidental, but explain to you what that means so that you have an understanding of, again, what am I willing to take on myself versus how much do I want the insurance company to cover? Man, the term claim, making a claim in insurance, that's a whole other thing, too. Well, and you need somebody to walk you through that. Is exactly. This, is this the right time to make a claim? Are you better off just paying for it yourself? Or is it better off to utilize your insurance for that? Uh, you know, if you have a potential claim and you're working with an independent agent, call that agent ahead of time. Don't call the insurance company. Have that conversation with them. They'll let you know uh, what makes sense. And, John, what else would you like people to know? If you'd like to be properly insured, give us a call, 866-798-2827. That's 866-798-2827. You can visit us at stewartinsurance.com or email us stewartinsurance at stewart.com. And the phone number again is 866-798-2827. John Bramlett with Stewart Insurance. John, thanks for being on the show again. Always a pleasure, Bill. And as we wind up the show, Peter Remington is back with Houston City Book Magazine. Peter, welcome back to the show. Well, thank you for having me one more time. I'm glad to be here. Well, as we close the show, what else do you want people to know about the magazine or anything else? Well, I just want you to know that you can get the magazine online at HoustonCityBook.com, but also you can actually subscribe to the magazine if you want to have it mailed to well, you. That's what I want, yeah. Yeah, so you can subscribe to the magazine, get it mailed to you. And be looking. Right now we have uh, the music issue out right now, but coming up is our biggest and greatest issue coming up, which is called Leaders and Legends, where we highlight some of the greatest uh, legends here in this city and some of the leaders that are following in their footprints. I can't wait to see who's on that. I bet John Bramlett's in that issue. Don't spoil the surprise, though. Once again, Peter, thanks for being on the show. Oh, thank you. He's back, James Beaver, branch manager at Envoy Mortgage. James, as we close the show, what else do you want people to know? Hey, just reach out to us. Let us know how we can help you. You can get us at www.envoymortgage.com or beaverhomeloans.com. That's, that's my favorite website, you like beaverhomeloans.com. Beaverhomeloans.com, and that's 713-328-1138. And thanks for being on the show, James. Thanks a bunch, Bill. And we also thank Nicole Holmes with the show on Netflix, Marriage or Mortgage, Marriage or Mortgage. Check it out if you haven't seen the show. Totally entertaining. She is a realtor right there in Nashville, Tennessee. And we thank you all for listening to Real Estate Matters with Stuart Title. I am your host, Bill Nampick, together with John Bramlett, Tom Carpentier, all of us at Stuart Title and Stuart Insurance. We're glad you listened. Simply go to Stuart.com forward slash radio. That's right. All the shows are there, and you can even see the guests as we make a YouTube video of each one. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Tune in Sundays at 5 p.m. to Real Estate Matters with Stuart Title.